Hello. Today I will tell you about 10 common misconceptions about the religion of Islam. In this video, you will watch the first part of my series on misconceptions about religions in a completely unbiased manner. Please be more sensitive to other beliefs. Let's not offend people. Have a good time. 10. The Quran is nothing but fiction. Most non-Muslims, even those who aren't critical of Islam, take the stance that one cannot accept any of the Quran's content without being a Muslim. Therefore, they believe that the Quran is nothing but fiction. However, even non-Islamic scholars who are familiar with the Quran concede that the book contains a high number of known truths. These include scientific facts which were not known to the Prophet Muhammad, or indeed anybody during his lifetime. For example, the Quran provides clear and concise information on human embryonic development, the composition of ocean water, and even the formation of clouds. Also present in the Quran are several accounts of historical events which have since been accepted by secular historians and archaeologists. As such, even those who are not prepared to accept the spiritual messages of the Quran have a great deal to gain from reading it. 9. Muslims are unhygienic. Certain parts of the Middle East are lacking in basic amenities, including clean drinking water and even bathrooms as we know them. This, however, is the result of failing governments, famine, and war. It has nothing to do with the fact Islam is the prevailing religion in many Middle Eastern countries. Nevertheless, this hasn't stopped Islamophobies from branding Muslims as unhygienic. Even Muslims living in the Western world have reported being questioned about their grooming habits by ignorant critics hoping to raise a reaction. The reality is that Islam is the only religion which actively promotes personal hygiene. Muslims are encouraged to bathe regularly and are also expected to wash their hands and feet, including other areas of the body, before prayer. This is known in Islamic tradition as wudu. Those who buy into the anti-Islamic propaganda regarding the cleanliness of Muslims will also be surprised to learn that Islam has made mammoth contributions to grooming in the West. In fact, it is Islam that we have to thank for the toothbrush. Early Muslims practiced oral hygiene at a time when most of the world gave little thought to it. This they did by cleaning their teeth with a twig from the meswak tree, which had the ability to dislodge food from the gaps between teeth while simultaneously freshening the user's breath. This was a practice many believe to have been pioneered by Prophet Muhammad himself. 8. Islam condemns other religions. Non-Muslims often believe that Muslims view them as something of an enemy. However, this could not be further from the truth. The Quran teaches us not to ridicule other religions, even the false idols of Arabia. This extends to all religions. No Muslim should be derisive towards any religion or creed. Islam does not teach that those who do not accept the message of Islam are bound for hellfire. While it does talk about unbelievers and the unpleasant fate that awaits them, most scholars agree that this is in reference to the idol worshippers of Prophet Muhammad's time who actively sought to discredit and destroy him. Not only did they not believe Prophet Muhammad's revelations, they also did not believe that Muslims should be granted any rights in their society, including the right to live. It should come as no surprise, then, that the Quran and Hadith condemn them so powerfully. Muslims believe that no one knows the fate of any individual but Allah and what He chose to reveal to mankind. While we are taught what to do to gain Allah's pleasure and reward in this life and the next, we do not know how people will be judged by Him. When it comes to non-violent members of other religions, Islam has long been kind and courteous. 7. The Quran Encourages Violence The events of September 11, 2001 marked a major shift in the West's attitude towards Islam. The heinous terrorist attacks carried out on the World Trade Center left 2,977 innocent people dead. The perpetrators claimed to be acting in the name of Allah, fulfilling their jihad duties as outlined in the Quran and the Hadith. This began something of a public relations nightmare for Islam. People across the Western world began to view Islam and terrorism as one and the same. Muslims were accused of supporting the terrorists' acts, while mosques were destroyed in misguided attempts at retaliation. This Islamophobia persists to this day. The most ardent critics of Islam justify their disdain for Muslims by pointing to passages in the Quran and Hadith that they claim inspired the September 11th attacks and attacks like them. However, Muslim and non-Muslim theologians agree that the belief that the Quran encourages violence is unequivocally false. Throughout much of Prophet Muhammad's prophethood, Muslims were subjected to extreme violence being driven from their homes and even murdered for their beliefs. For a long time, 
they were commanded to refrain from retaliating. Six, Muslim men can take as many wives as they like. In a way, this point goes back to our earlier discussion about the Quran's alleged sexist views. Critics of Islam often point to Prophet Muhammad's multiple wives as evidence Islam does not care for women. They generally go on to say that even a modern Muslim man is permitted to take as many wives as he likes under the laws of Islam. This is blatantly incorrect. While Islam does allow a man to take multiple wives, he is subjected to strict rules and regulations if he does not wish to fall out of favor with Allah. For starters, a Muslim man may not be married to more than four women at any one time. Furthermore, he may only marry multiple women if he is capable of providing all of them with an equally comfortable life. He is not permitted to display any favoritism towards a particular wife and thus must ensure all enjoy the same amount of food, gifts, and love. It is important to note that even though Islamic law technically permits plural marriage, most modern Muslims do not partake in it. 5. Muslims want to bring Sharia law to the West. Sharia law is certainly one of the more controversial aspects of Islam. Formed over hundreds of years, it dictates everything from how often a Muslim should pray to how family disputes should be settled. In many areas, traditional Sharia law is quite diplomatic. In others, however, it is not. Certain punishments under Sharia law can seem quite barbaric, especially in Islamic countries which have lost touch with the true meaning of the religion. These had, corporal penalties, are only enacted in a society in which there is economic, social, and political justice, where crime is purely out of mischievous and evil intent, not from the disenfranchised, marginalized, politically beaten down, economically oppressed people. In the midst of a socially, politically, economically, just system with equal access to prosperity and utter absence of racism, sexism, and injustice, crime has a completely different face, and corporal punishments are swift, and no stigma accompanying the person thereafter. No place on earth has this type of society, and therefore is not capable of meeting out these penalties. 4. Prophet Muhammad had an ailment of the mind. When the Prophet Muhammad first began sharing stories of his meetings with the angel Gabriel and the revelations which would eventually make up the Quran, people were quick to brand him as a lunatic. This was a tactic used by them to undermine his message and even himself. Indeed, it seems as though Prophet Muhammad himself doubted his senses at first. It is for this reason that the Quran contains several verses directly reassuring the Prophet that he was not being deceived. When the Prophet Muhammad's message began to have a following, the ruling parties of Mecca grew concerned. 3. Islam is sexist. One of the heaviest accusations thrown against Islam that it is sexist. Anti-Islam propaganda claims that the Quran describes women as second-class citizens who have no purpose beyond catering to every man's every whim. As anybody who is familiar with Islamic doctrine will tell you, this is incorrect. In Surah 3, Ayah 195, Allah clearly states, Be you male or female, you are equal to one another. Later in the Quran, we are told that believing men and women will enter paradise without the slightest injustice. Many supposedly Islamic countries also believe the Quran to hold men in higher regard than women. These are the countries which force female Muslims to entirely cover their body, including their face, using a burqa. Despite the burqa's close ties to countries at the center of the Islamic world, most Islamic scholars agree that it is not mandatory wear for women. In reality, the Quran encourages women to wear a simple headscarf and modest clothing, known colloquially as a hijab, in order to conform with its teachings on modesty. 2. Muslims don't believe in Jesus. As mentioned in the previous section, many non-Muslims assume that Islam simply replaces Jesus with Prophet Muhammad and completely disregards the former. This could not be further from the truth. All Muslims accept Jesus as a messenger of God, and moreover, one of the five great prophets of resolve. But Muslims don't share all of the beliefs of their Christian brothers. While Christianity teaches that Jesus was the Son of God, as well as being God Himself, Islamic tradition states that Jesus was another in a long line of prophets. Indeed, He was born of a virgin, but He was not the Son of God. Rather, He was sent here by Allah, as all prophets were, to spread the message of monotheism and help guide souls towards eternal salvation. 1. Muslims Worship Muhammad most non-Muslims assume that Islam follows a similar pattern to Christianity, with Jesus swapped out for Muhammad. While it is true that Islam and Christianity share a number of beliefs, Muslims do not worship anybody other than Allah. This includes Muhammad. Islamic doctrine teaches that Muhammad was a prophet of Allah, just as Moses, Noah, Abraham, 
and many other biblical figures were prophets of Allah. Muhammad's was greatly favored by Allah, which is why he was chosen to bring forth the Quran over all other men of his time. As great as he was, however, Muhammad was a mere mortal. He was not the son of God or the earthly embodiment of God, and as such, should not be worshipped. As the Quran tells us time and time again, Allah is the sole being worthy of praise and should not be overlooked in favor of his prophets. Thanks for watching.